This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can take an image and use it to trace a vector halftone portrait using Inkscape. So getting us started here in Inkscape, the first thing I want to do is just set up the workflow so that we all have a similar setup on our screen. I'm going to come up here to where it says View. I want to make sure I have Custom selected, and then I want to zoom. I want to go to View, Zoom, and Zoom in at one-to-one. -one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my example photo. So I have over here my other, mo my other monitor, I have my example photo. I'm just going to click and drag that file into Inkscape. I'm going to leave the defaults as they are and click OK. And there we go. There is the example photo I will be using for this tutorial. This is just a stock photo that I grabbed off the internet. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to use this image. Otherwise, you can use whatever image you'd like. So the first thing we have to do is make this image black and white. So I'm going to make sure I have the image selected and I'll come up here to where it says filters and I'll come over to color and I'm looking for grayscale. Now I'm going to take this menu, I'm going to tick the preview box right here just to give us a preview of how this looks. Uh, if you want, you can adjust your RGB values up here as well as, the, as the, uh, the lightness. I like how this looks as it is, so I'm just going to leave it as it is and click apply. And now that we've done that, now that this is applied, we can close out of this menu. And now I want to open up the layers menu, which is located uh, over here. Or you could just press Control, Shift, and L on your keyboard. So right, this right here, layer one, this is the layer where the image is located. We want to create a new layer to trace our halftone portrait over this image. So I'm going to click the plus icon down here, and I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to use the layer name. I'm just going to leave the default. And position, we want to make sure we have above current. And then go ahead and click Add. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a single circle going over this image right here. So let me grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'm going to click and drag on the canvas to create a circle. I'm going to hold control on the keyboard so it makes a perfectly round circle like that. And I'm going to make this black. Let me grab the select tool and put this towards the top of the, uh, the top left corner of the image right here. And in fact, I'm going to scale that down a little more. What I want to do is align this in the top left corner here. So let's open up the alignment menu, which is over here, or you could press Control Shift A. And with this circle selected, I'm going to hold Shift and I'm going to click on the image so we have them both selected. And in the Align and Distribute menu, I want to make sure I have Last Selected chosen from this relative dropdown. And I want to align this to the left edge, and then I want to align this to the top edge so that is right there in the top left corner. And now we can click off of that to deselect everything. So now I'm going to click and drag over the circle so I have just the circle selected and I'm going to go to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. And in this menu over here, what we're looking for is the Trace option. Now from these settings over here, you want to make sure you have Trace the drawing under the clone slash sprayed items. You want to have that selected. You want to have Color selected. You want to leave the defaults as they are over here. And then down here, we only want presence and size selected. We don't want either of these selected. And then down here, apply the tiled clones to, we want to choose width and height, and we want to change the width and height to match the width and height of this image. So let me click on this image here so I can see the width and height. As you can see, the width is 1,000 pixels wide and then a 778 pixels high. So I'm going to change this over here. Let me select the circle again. I'm going to change this to pixels, and I'm going to change this to the same size that uh, the image is over here, which is 1000 by 778. As you can see, I already have it inputted here. So once you've done that, you could just go ahead and click Create. And as you can see, it's going to create a bunch of copies of that um, a bunch of copies of that circle and use it to trace over the image here. And you can see it a little better if you come over here to the Layers menu and turn off the visibility of Layer 1. You can see where it traced that image a little better. Now let me turn that back on. Let me come over here. Let me undo what I just did there by pressing Control Z. Let me undo it again, Control Z. One more time, Control Z. And there we go. What I want to do is make this circle a little smaller and see if I can get a better result. Oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Let me make this a little smaller. Click on Create. And as you can see, with the smaller circle, it added more circles in here. There's more circle density. So I think that looks a little better. If you want, let me undo that again. If you want, you can make this larger and see how that looks. This is just a matter of personal preference at this point. If you go ahead and click on Create, you can see how that looks right there. I liked how it looked better with the smaller circle, so let me undo that one more time. And let me just make that a little smaller like that. Click on Create. There we go. Now I'm going to come over here to the Layers menu. I'm going to turn off the visibility of Layer 1. And if you zoom out, you can really see the portrait. It almost looks like an actual image, but if you zoom in all the way, you can see this is indeed a vector tracing. There is no quality loss here as you zoom in. These are vectors. And the cool thing about this is that all of these circles are linked to the original 
circle. So whatever you do to that original circle will be applied to all of the other circles as well. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to zoom in over here. I'm going to take this original circle and move it out of the way. Let me zoom out. To zoom, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. To move the page around, just pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. I'm going to take that circle and I'm going to make that blue. And as you can see, it made all of the other circles blue. And this works with any other transformation as well. If I make this a little bigger, it's going to make all of those circles a little bigger. And I think that looks better right there. Up close, it looks like a tracing of a bunch of little circles. But if you zoom out, you can see it looks more like a photograph. So I think that should do it for this tutorial. That is how you can very easily go about creating your own halftone portraits using images in Inkscape. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.